Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for joining this PolyU Info Day session, uh, specifically dedicated to our program, which is MA in English Studies for the Profession. Together with, with us today are the, um, my colleague, Dr. William Fung, he is the Associate Program Leader, and we've also got a lady, Ms. Mackie Q. Uh, she's one of the outstanding alumni. She'll share her experience with us later today. And myself is Victor Ho, the program leader of MAESP. So um, we'll start our info day session now. So this is what we're going to do today in, in the next 45 minutes three things all together. The first one is I'll do a, a introduction to our program, the MAESP program, and some introduction to our department, which is the Department of English of PolyU. And after that, I'll invite Ms. Mack to share with us her experience studying on our program. And lastly, we'll have approximately five to 10 minutes for Q&A so that you can ask us any questions that you may have about the program. So first of all, the MAESP program. I'd like to first of all share with you the program aims. There are two of the, these program aims. The first one is, the first one concerns the theory and practice of English. So we want to provide you um, with a comprehensive and critical understanding of both the theory and practice of English in two main contexts. One is the educational context and the other is context other than educational. So that's whether you are a teacher or a professional like an engineer or accountant or administrator, I guess you have plenty of chances to use English in your daily uh, work. So when you use English, you will understand the theory behind and you'll understand why you're using English in the way that you do in your daily life and in your professional context as well. And the second aim of the program is to provide you with the knowledge and skills to become an innovative and reflective professional in a range of institutional settings. As a professional, I guess we'll need to keep improving. And to improve ourselves, we need to be innovative. So we'll be able to make, we'll be able to refer to something that we know, to something that we always use, and uh, in order to make uh, some new ideas, we can use uh, some new ideas and to be reflective. So we, we need to, be able to ask ourselves why we're doing what we are doing. So these are the program aims. And there are a number of, uh, you know, people in different professions studying MAESP. For example, teachers, teaching in primary and secondary schools, English learning centers and universities, not only in Hong Kong, but perhaps in the mainland as well. And we have got in this year currently, we've got three students coming from Singapore. They are serving teachers in schools, in secondary schools in Singapore. The second group of professionals joining MAESP will be those managers, administrators. You know, they are mainly from the middle to senior level managers and administrators. So they include executive offices, or managers in both public and private organizations. And for example, we have one general, we have a general manager of an international food and beverage company. She's a graduate of MAESP. Uh, we also have a graduate now acting as a senior consultant of a training company. Another graduate is a senior analyst in a local telecommunications company with engineers. And so some information for you, just last month, I've interviewed approximately 10 engineers applying to our program. They want to specialize in English for the professions. 
because they they need to use a lot of English uh, with their clients and with the supervisors. We also have civil servants, for example, immigration officer. We've got the recent graduates working as a senior immigration officer in Hong Kong government. And we also have people working in education related professions. For example, we've got one graduate working as a registrar in a qualification accreditation body in Hong Kong and working as a college secretary. So what is a college secretary? It's the head of administration department in a local tertiary institute. So these are some of the professionals joining our MAESP. And there are four specialisms of our program and there should be one for your profession. And these four specialisms include English language arts, English language studies, English language teaching and English for the professions. The first three, ELA, ELS and ELT, mainly are mainly for individuals who are serving teachers or who want to be English language teachers. And English for the professions, EP, are mainly for individuals who are non-teachers. Maybe you are accountant, maybe you're an engineer, administrator who wants to improve your English. And some more important information about these specialisms is the first three specialisms. Um, graduates of these three specialisms are regarded as equivalent to a degree, holding a degree, majoring in English. Okay, and you can fulfill the education bureau subject knowledge requirement and language proficiency requirements. That means graduates of these three specialisms, if you want to teach English in Hong Kong schools, primary schools or secondary schools, you will be regarded as a, which is equivalent as a graduate majoring in English, your bachelor's degree, and the Education Bureau will regard you as someone whose English language is good enough to be English language teachers in Hong Kong. And graduates of EP, and you will be able to fulfill the Education Bureau's language proficiency requirements, but you won't be, you won't be regarded as being equivalent to a holder of a degree majoring in English, okay? But your English is still, will still be regarded as good enough to be an English language teacher. So of course you need to uh, pursue your uh, teaching qualification as well, if you want to become an English language teacher in Hong Kong. So I'm going to talk about each of these specialisms in detail. The first one is English language arts, ELA is specifically catered to individuals who are interested in language arts. So plays, poems, and literature. And for English language teachers, maybe you are now serving English language teachers or you will be English language teachers and you want to receive some in-depth training in the study of language arts. Maybe you want to teach a subject such as uh, English literature, or maybe um, you, you need to teach English through drama, perhaps, then that specialism will be very relevant to you. Some examples of specialism specific subjects, so the subjects that you will take may include English literature and language arts, drama for language learning or oral language arts. The second specialist I'd like to talk about is ELS, English Language Studies. So it's catered for individuals who have a genuine interest in English. Yes, for English language teachers, but if, even if you aren't English language teachers, but you have a genuine interest in English, you're more than welcome to join. Or for professionals, especially English language teachers who want to develop their understanding of the systems and uses of English. Okay, so 
why do we use English in the way that we do? And how the systems and uses of English relates to their work, okay? Then ELS will be very, very suitable for you. Some example subjects like language development and use communication and the sociology of language, social and economic perspectives. So you can see that ELS covers quite a large range of subjects from uh, language development, about how people acquire their language and develop their language ability, to some general subjects like communication in general, to a rather specific one, sociology of language from a social and economic perspective. The third specialism is ELT, English Language Teaching. So as the name of the specialism suggests, it is specifically designed for English language teachers. Whether you're serving English language teachers or future English language teachers, if you want to acquire the knowledge and skills that you need to design and deliver engaging and effective English language courses, then ELT will be a very good specialism for you, okay? And some examples of specialism specific subjects, they include second language teaching. Of course, it's second language teaching because I guess it, as an English language teacher, um, English will be the second language of your students. Testing and assessment, we always need to set tests and assignments. So that subject will, will teach you how to set tests and assignments effectively. And of course, syllabus planning and materials design. How would you, how are you going to design the syllabus maybe of a new subject? How are you going to design teaching and learning materials for your students? And the last specialism of our program is EP, English for the professions. It is, it is for professionals of all disciplines, okay? whether you're from engineering, from, from the business, perhaps from, you know, C4 sevens, okay, all disciplines, who wish to upgrade their ability in English. You just simply want to improve your English or who need to demonstrate a high level of communicative competence in English in their professional workplace. Perhaps you are required to, to communicate with people whose first, first language is English, or you need to communicate with people using English, and you are required to, to show others that you are very competent in using English, then perhaps EP will be your choice. So examples of specialism specific subjects include practical communication strategies, I just want to stress the words practical. We'll teach you how to write minutes, how to write effective emails, how to write effective business reports, and how to give business presentations. Uh, intercultural communication in business. I guess all of you will, will agree that we are now living in a highly intercultural uh, community, highly globalized world. So intercultural communication is indispensable. So we've got to be able to communicate effectively interculturally. And multimodality and semiotic studies. Well, what is multimodality and semiotic studies? Uh, Dr. William Fung will be the better person to, to you know, explain to you. But in short, I would say it concerns the use of pictures, um, graphs, colors, to convey our meaning, okay? Instead of, you know, conveying, or apart from conveying our meanings and messages using words, we can also do so using pictures, graphs, and colors. So now let me talk something about our departments. So it's, we are from the Department of English, where leading international scholars teach and research. I'm going to show you some of, I mean, our members. So you can see this is a truly international department. So you, these uh, professors are from different parts of the world, from Denmark, from Australia, from Sweden, from the US, 
from UK, Singapore, uh, France, Spain, uh, local, of course, Hong Kong and mainland China, um, some more from New Zealand as well. So you can see that our department is a truly international department. So if you join us, I'm sure that you'll get a lot, a lot of intercultural uh, communication opportunities and you will learn the best from different parts of the world. Um, what about our teaching and research expertise? Uh, first of all, something that uh, I hope you should know, which is our linguistics is ranked 45th in the latest QS World University rankings, which is really a very, very high ranking indeed. And there are altogether five teaching and research areas in our departments. The first one is language and professional communication. The second one is language teaching and learning. Third one, linguistics, English language and systemic functional linguistics. The fourth one is media and communication. And the fifth one is area studies and intercultural communication. So look, you can see that Yes, our, our department is called the Department of English, but what we do indeed covers a lot more than English. So we talk about professional communication, we, we look at language teaching and learning, we look at media, we look at communication, we look at intercultural communication. And I believe that one of these teaching and research areas will be of interest to you. Okay, let's come to your study. The duration, how long will you need to complete the MAESP? If you study full-time, it just take you one year, or two years if you choose the part-time mode. Study pattern. So you need to gain a total of 30 credits by one of two ways. The first one is by coursework only. You just study subjects, you don't need to do any research at all. If you take this pathway, you need to first of all study four core subjects plus two or three specialism related core subjects, depending on which specialism that you choose, plus three or four specialism related elective subjects, again, depending on which specialism you choose altogether 30 credits. If you're interested in doing research, then you can do so by coursework and research. In that case, you need to, first of all, again, four core subjects, but you also need to do one research method subject so that you know how to do research, plus three specialism related core or elective subjects, and of course, plus your research project. So in this case, you can do, you can complete your study by doing coursework altogether 24 credits plus a research project, six credits. Okay, finally, fees, how much do you need to pay? If you're a local student, you're from Hong Kong, eh? you need to pay $3,600 per credit. So you need to pay altogether 3,600 times 30, okay? And if you're a low local student, maybe you are from mainland China, you are from Singapore, from UK or from Australia, you need to pay a bit more for each credit. You need to pay 5,100 per credit, so times 30, will be the total amount of fees that you need to pay. And now it's time for our outstanding alumni to share. And well, we have invited two. The first one is Connie. Um, she graduated from MAEP and she's now the general manager of Suntory Beverage and Food Hong Kong. But very, very unfortunately, she just let us know that 
you know, about 10 minutes before this info seminar. That shares some technical problem at home. Um, she just can't get connected um, to the internet. Therefore, um, she can't join us, um, very, very unfortunately. But we still have another one, Miss Mac. I guess we can see her now. She's now the English panel head of a local primary school. Panel head, which is equivalent to the head of department of a local school in Hong Kong. All right, so Mac. Please. Hi. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Miss Mac. Every student call me Miss Mac though. And uh, Dr. Ho always called me Mac, and I really like this name. And indeed, I'm currently working as an English teacher in a local government primary school. For my administration duty, I am the English panel head. And the courses that I've taken in PolyU, MALT, MAELT, is really closely related to what I'm working now in my domain. And the courses and the skills, the pedagogies, everything that I learned enhances my professional knowledge. And in some courses, for example, uh, second language learning, uh, in which I learn different aspects that affect language acquisition. And for the second language teaching, I also have the opportunity to learn the latest pedagogical trends and also how to teach reading, writing while incorporating different multimedia modes uh, into our studies and uh, planning. And most important of all, which I think is very useful is uh, the course called um, Syllabus Planning and Materials Design, uh, which was taught by Dr. Ho um, last year. And I was really fortunate to take this course because I have gained a lot uh, in due course. Having said that, I learned how to evaluate the effectiveness of different language syllabus. And we learn how to design materials and make adaptations to cater for different learning needs of our students. I think this is very important as teachers. We are professionals and we know our students' ability very well. And we have to make professional judgment on designing and adapting those learning materials uh, for our students for their better need. So in these courses, I really gain a lot. And I'm really, really happy to have a chance to share with you today. And in due course, as I just heard Dr. Ho said, we endeavor to be a reflective professional, right? And in these courses, you definitely can do that. I have been doing a lot of reflection during my uh, courses. And uh, I also have discussion among our schoolmates, groupmates, and I really gain a lot from other students as well, not only uh, through reading or some other sources, we also gain a lot from other professions, okay? And um, to my interest personally, drama is my interest and kind of uh, life changing substance because I was once a very shy girl which uh, who could not talk in front of public. But drama made me alive and changed my life totally. From a shy girl to a person who can talk to you right now is kind of magic. And drama to me is kind of enhancing myself and also my teaching as well. Uh, in PolyU here, I have also enrolled a drama for language learning and the professor is also very good. She taught me how to incorporate drama games in my teaching and I engage my students in my language teaching and learning as well. The skills and games that I learned in the new course make my English lessons more attractive, interactive and fun. And I do believe our students can benefit a lot for, uh, from the drama games and other activities that I have planned for them. So 
no doubt. I really recommend you guys to enroll this course because I really think this is a very good experience of learning and enhancing ourselves as professionals. Okay, thank you for your time. So thank you very much, Mac, for your sharing. And I believe that the um, participants of our uh, info session today will gain a lot from your sharing. But I believe that perhaps you may have some other questions as well. So if you do, please, please um, feel free to call us. Um, Jenny, she's the one responsible for the uh, administrative support for this program. Call her or email her or you can call me or email me anytime for any questions that you may have. And remember the application period for um, the uh, 2021 intake is now open uh, until the end of April.